Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all some of the updates that have happened recently to the TEAS exam. Since about 2016, the TEAS-6 exam has been one of the key nursing entrance exams. And now as of June 2022, the TEAS-6 exam has been updated to the TEAS-7 exam, which I know sounds a little scary and probably all of you who are here listening to this video are wondering, what are some of the changes that have happened? What do I need to know now as I am preparing for the T7 exam? So that is what I am going to be sharing with you today. So today's video is going to be pretty short and sweet and I'm going to focus on three things. First of all, I'm going to talk about what has stayed the same on the T7 exam from the T6. And then I'm going to talk about two major changes that have happened with the T7 exam. First of all, we'll talk about each individual section and how each section the questions have changed just a little bit. And second, we'll talk about some new question types that you will see on the T7 exam. So let's jump into the fun stuff. So what has stayed the same from the T6 to the T7? Basically, the length of the exam and the number of questions has stayed exactly the same. So that is great news. So the T6 had 170 questions that you had 209 minutes in total to complete and the T7 has the exact same number. So there's 170 questions split up into four different major sections and those 170 questions you still have 209 minutes total to complete. Second, the four major sections are all going to stay the same. You still have the reading, the math, the science section, and then the English and language usage section. None of that has changed, it all has stayed the same from the T6 to the T7. So now let's jump into what has actually changed on the T7 exam. So first of all, we're going to just do a very quick breakdown of what has changed on each individual section of the test. First of all, the reading section. On the T6 exam, the reading section had 53 questions and a time limit of 64 minutes. Now, this is great news for those of you who are maybe not such a fan of the reading section, the ATI has lowered the number of questions on the T7 reading section to 45 questions total. And the time limit has also lowered a bit as well. So that's for a total of 55 minutes. Now out of those questions, there's going to be five questions that are unscored. And the ATI T's uses those five questions basically as pilot questions. They're basically questions that they're testing out to see if they work on the exam, and so those five questions will not be scored. Also changed on the reading section is that more questions are going to be used to assess your integration of knowledge and ideas. So there will be more questions with that specific category, and less questions will be geared toward your understanding of craft and structure and key ideas and details. The focus has also changed a little bit from the math section on the T6 and the T7. So on the T6, it was a little bit more focused on algebra skills, and now the T7 is going to be more equally focused on your numbers and algebra skills, and then also your measurement and data skills. So those are more evenly split. So now moving on to the science section, and here's where, honestly, the majority of the changes are taking place. So on the science section of the T6 exam, there were 53 questions with a time limit of 63 minutes. Now for the T7 exam, they have slightly lowered the number of questions and the time limit. So now you will have 50 questions and 60 minutes to complete those questions. Now content wise, there have also been the most major changes in the science section. So on the T6 exam, the science section questions were broken down into anatomy and physiology and life and physical sciences and then scientific reasoning. Now on the T7 exam, they still have the anatomy and physiology questions as well as the scientific reasoning questions, but now that there are no more life and physical science questions. Instead, there are going to be biology and chemistry questions. So that is where the majority of the changes have taken place for the science section of the T7. And finally, for the English and language usage section. So for the T6 exam, on this section, there were 28 questions with a time limit of 28 minutes. Now, the ATI has kept this rate of one minute per question, but they have increased the number of questions. So now there will be 37 questions with a total of 37 minutes to complete those questions. This section has stayed extremely similar between the T6 and the T7 exam. The major content change is the T6 having questions regarding vocabulary acquisition to now the T7, which has a category that is using language and vocabulary to express ideas in writing. So now we'll get into the second major change 
from the T6 to the T7, and that is the types of questions that you are going to see on the T7 exam. Now, on the T6 exam, there were only multiple choice questions. That was it. So now, the T7 has started to update some different types of questions, and they're really basing it off of the next-gen NCLEX question types that you're also going to see. And so they're modeling it after that, and helping you to prepare for that. So here are the different types of questions that you are going to see in addition to some multiple choice questions. So with multiple choice, you will just have a question with four different answer options. You can select any one of those four answer options and you choose the only one option that is the correct answer. Sometimes they will have graphs or pictures that will go along with the question. So now let's take a quick look at the four other different types of questions that you could see on the T7 exam. First of all is select all that apply. So these questions will be similar to multiple choice. However, the difference is that there could be more than one correct answer option. And so you are going to have to decide which answer or which answers are correct for the question. You do need to select all that could be correct in order to receive the points for that question. Now the second type that you may see is a fill in the blank answer. So this will have a question with a blank after it where the student must fill in the correct answer in the box without having options given to them. These questions are going to have specific instructions that tell you exactly how to enter the answer. So you do need to make sure that you're paying close attention so that you enter it correctly and so that you receive the points for that question. The third type of question that you may see on the exam is the hotspot questions. So hotspot questions will ask you a question and they will have an image or a graph that correlates with the question and you are required to click on the area that answers the question correctly. And again for this question you do need to select the exact correct area in order to receive the full points for the question. So finally the last type of question that you may see on your exam is ordered response questions. So in this type of question there will be a question and then answer options. So for these ones, you are just required to click, drag and drop them and place them in the proper order and then you'll submit the answer. And again, it does need to be all in the correct order in order for you to receive the points for the question. There's no partial credit for any of these answers on the T's exam and so you want to make sure that you have the correct answers before you submit them on the exam. All right, my friends, so for better or for worse, that is the T7 exam and the changes that have happened between the T6 and the T7 exam. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.